guys, welcome back to episode two of the Bucky Joe podcast with myself, Craigie Mitchell. This is just, we discussed this in last week's episode, that Jillian may or may not appear. I think this is just going to be a solo venture for myself. We're literally just after doing a video. He's going to all check it out on the YouTube channel. Mr. Tyson Fury has released some energy drinks. So I'm a little bit wired here at the minute. Tasted four of his energy drinks. Could be awake for the next few days. Don't know yet. But this is episode two. I'm hoping you're liking the little beats in the background as well. These are royalty-free, no copyright background music videos off of YouTube's. I will leave it in the description of the, the video version of this. But I'll mention it here now. A guy called White Bat Audio. Get to his channel. Like, subscribe. The uh, the guy's name is Carl Casey at White Bat Audio. So please subscribe. His music is amazing. All these different sort of retro retro synth wave, lo fi hip hop type beats. All different themes. This week's is an LA sunset type vibe. So you're talking like 80s, sort of Blade Runner type vibe. But yeah, that's what we'll be doing each week. We'll try and mention the artiste. I'm hoping you're liking that little, little video set up too. Maybe iPod in the corner that's going to be playing the, the jams. But yeah, this is episode two, guys. Getting back into the swing of things. Keeping the old YouTubes going. Getting the podcast back up and running. It's hard work. I think that's why I'm going to stick with it, being just myself. Um, because two full-time jobs, six-year-old son. It's hard work to try and get the two of us to even sit down to watch TV together and might record a podcast, so... She'll drop in from now and then, but it's essentially just going to be myself. Um, I am the Buck Egypt, if you want to call it that. So yeah, we just done what was essentially our first taste, test, try video, if you want to call it that. Mr. Tyson Fury. Now, get this, guys. The fucking line he has on this. Only Tyson Fury could get away with this, really. Brace yourself. Unlike my opponents, Ferocity packs a real punch. It's about hitting your day harder and making the moment count. It's a feeling you can't bottle. So I put it in a can. <laughs> oh, only Tyson Fury could get away with that shit. So I put it in a can. Fucking hell. Check out the video and you'll you'll uh, see my reaction to the flavours. And again, the flavours even have a little bit of a fucking boxing pun with them. We've got... Okay, we've got the original, and we've got black and blue raspberry, sour apple punch, and sour cherry knockout. They were decent. Check the video out, you'll see my full reaction. If you're listening to this and you want to see, listening or watching this, and you want to see more tasting or testing or trying or whatever you want to call it, do you leave it in the comments. Email us, react at gmail.com. And we will potentially add it to the list, the ever-growing list of stuff that we have got planned. So the podcast, the podcast, uh, now, if you look at the actual YouTube channel, we are sitting on, believe it or not, 230 videos, I think it is. Which, <laughs> fuck me, I didn't think I was going to get that many. I'll be able to tell you now exactly how many. 200. And 30 exactly. And as we're recording this, we have done five today, four today. So, I mean, it's like five a week. Four reactions and a podcast, basically a week, is what the sort of the rota is at the minute. Um... So yeah, in no time at all, we're going to hit 250, and I've got a bit of a plan for the 250 episode. It's a bit of a milestone. We're going to have a guest on the podcast. It's going to be a guest podcast. 
Um, I'm not going to give it away here now on this because it's going to be a, probably a few weeks time before we before we actually do it. But someone we have uh, the only hint they'll give us it's someone that we've reacted to. Um, so yeah, say no more. But we're slowly creeping up. 250 episodes nearly. Episodes 250 videos. Episode two of the podcast. So yeah, it's available on any and all of your podcasting, wherever you get them from. Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts. That's on Spotify. I'll show you. For the guys at home that are watching. If I go to my Google Podcasts, because I have a little pixel phone. You can see, look, the Buck Easy Podcast. Now, it does say we have 12 episodes, but that was because... We're coming up to oh, a year and a half ago. Was it a year and a half ago? Yeah, it was. Almost. When we started this whole uh, online thing. So yeah, the relaunch was just technically, was technically episode two. Still haven't got a clue what, really what we're doing podcast wise, but it's just a chance for me to sit down, practice, talk. The, uh, the topics will come as, as the more we do it. Today's topic is Tyson Fury and Furosity. The big dosser that he is. The man's a legend. I mean, say what you will about the man. You know, he is world champion. He's beat the best. He tried to kill himself. Was it the lowest? The lowest of lows. He's an inspiration, really. Like, say you know, whatever you think about him. You know, he's come from the bottom of the barrel, you know, drinking himself into oblivion, saying that he's going to kill himself. You turn that right round and be fucking world champion. I mean, come on. You got to give him that. And if you check out the YouTube video that we've just recorded, he's done a half decent energy drink as well. I'm drinking the original. I think the original is the only one I'll probably finish because I can't drink four energy drinks in one day or there'll be a lot of podcasts done. So yeah, I found last week too when it, when I had the sort of they call it lo-fi hip hop beats. I was almost talking in time to the beat. It made it sound like I was in a late night radio station. Welcome, you know that kind of way. I was I found myself going slow and time trying to time myself talking to the the beat. But yeah, that's where we're at. Ch- uh, slowly just chipping away at the big beast that is YouTube the podcast is just a sort of hobby for me I, you know if it takes off it takes off I'm just going to keep doing it every week I enjoy doing it we have the t- we have the technology to sit and do it we're going to get guests of a few friends that have asked talked about coming on you know a few colleagues in my work you know we can sit and talk shit for an hour get it up on the old interwebs but yeah the podcast was the main thing. I mean, uh, I'm of an age where I enjoy a good podcast. I enjoy sitting down. More watching podcasts. I started listening, but then once once I discovered that the majority of the people I listen to did it in video format, then, you know, you sit at night and you watch a three-hour podcast. Joe Rogan, Joey Diaz, all the big American comedians. Some movie podcast and stuff but that's what got me thinking okay I can do a podcast but what can I talk about mainly we're going to talk about what we're doing on the YouTube channel so we've got reactions musical I haven't done any stand up in a while but there's been some stand up musical scary be it our, our main bread and butter but being from the little town that I'm from, there's events and there's places and there's restaurants and coffee shops and stuff. And I want to try and do sort of, you wouldn't call them reactions, you'd call them review videos of these new places. Because I mean, our wee town got a bad rep for many, many years during the Troubles, etc. 
But I mean, it's become a sort of foodie destination, a drink destination, a coffee destination. Um, I was intending to do some stuff with this current little festival on called Illuminate, where they project these videos on the buildings in the t- in the city, and it's all showcasing the history and um, the growth of the city over a hundred years or whatever it is. But the weather just didn't play ball. We were going through some serious sort of stormy, snowy, blizzardy type stuff. The event was over two weekends. Most of the first weekend was cancelled because of the weather. And now we're coming up to today's Wednesday as I record this. Starts again tomorrow. And it's forecast for snow, blizzard conditions, heavy winds again. Which isn't really conducive. That's the right word for people to go out and stand outside and watch projections on a building and there's like I wanted to do that because there was food little boutique coffee and food vendors at it we got some stuff recorded but it was the weather was just awful so throughout the summer of this year once the weather starts to pick up a bit more we're going to try and do sort of pick a I mean, let's talk coffee shops. I mean, I haven't got enough fingers to count the many coffee shops there is in this town at the minute, and they keep popping up, and they're a little unique, and they all have their own wee niche, and there's tons of that. So I'm only trying to do the cool little videos, going and trying coffees and buns and stuff, and then there's the restaurants. The rest, like, in the last 10 years, the food scene in our city has grown massively. Tons of cool little foodie foodie places eateries so that's what I want to add to the channel but like take my time doing it and shoot them really well get some really cool b-roll I mean Jillian's a photographer but her camera that I bought her is a really top class camera for video so I'm going to try and do some really cool short videos on on those types of places throughout the summer and I have a drone too so I'm going to get some really cool drone shots so that's one of the main things I want to try and do, make it look a lot more sleek and a lot more professional throughout the summer once the weather starts to pick up. So that'll be one of the main things I'll be adding to the channel, um, along with all these events and stuff, festivals, the, uh, oh, I can't even remember the name, it was just announced the Clipper was going to come back, which is a big boating event down the quay, our city's on a river and all these boats will come up some really cool uh, seafood stands and f- foods and coffees and all the rest of it but yeah that's the kind of sort of stuff I'm going to take longer to do take more time making it look more sleek the podcast about every week we'll get guests the reaction videos are just going to be every week as long as you guys keep commenting liking Recommending some more stuff, more music, more bands, more the scary stuff as well. I'm going to try and get the scary stuff picked up again because that was really, really good. Um, but yeah, and as was the first time round with this podcast, it's going to be it's going to take a while for the for the mold and form into what I wanted to be but it should uh, should be fun we'll get Gillian on some of the episodes soon <laughs> might even get Harson in some of the episodes soon but yeah I think my problem when we started the channel I wanted to do so much so quick I didn't take any real great time I was just churning out stuff oh I'm getting views churn it out churn it out I didn't take the time to sort of stop and sort of quality control and and almost in a way. So that's why this year the reactions are pretty, it's a pretty easy thing to do. Creating it, it's pretty simple. It was going to be done weekly, but then try and do the longer form stuff. Take time to edit, piece together, create the story. Um... When we first started, like I was churning out video after video after video. So I just need to slow it down a bit. 
and take a bit more time recording them, creating them, putting the story together. The reaction stuff is all down to you guys. The more uh, you guys interact, comment, like, subscribe, recommend, then the more I can do. I mean, of the 230 videos, close to 200 of them must be reaction videos, so that is the main thing. My son asked me last night, is NI Couple Reacts your job? And I said, no, it's a hobby. It's a hobby that I, something I enjoy doing. I wish it was my job. So, uh, you know, the, the old Dell boy phrase this time next year, Rodney, we could be millionaires. I'm in no rush for this to be the full-time job. The podcast side of things I'd love to do, the interviewing side of things I'd love to take more more seriously because, I mean, that was the initial plan. So I'd love to, you know, there's, I know some people that could, that could, could uh, get some good conversations going, people from the town, people from business, you know, people from YouTube channels in the town. So the, the podcast side of things is almost a, a beast of its own. You know, the YouTube reactions, doing the the videos around our town and stuff is sort of one thing. Podcast is almost a beast of its own. That it sort of needs its own time and energy put into it. But that's where I want to. I, w- I really want to end up taking it. It's like this week's this week's guest. I want to start saying, you know. But yeah. I mean, I, I'm in a job now where I have, a, I can have potentially a lot of time to sit and do this myself. That's that's the one thing. And I'm in a job. I don't really, really don't really want to mention my job just yet. Um, but it's a sort of massive part of the foodie side of things in our city, without giving any hints away. So there's potential for involving that in the, in the channel as well. I couldn't be any more vague there, could I? But, yeah, so... A lot of potential for stuff, for content, for videos. This city has a lot going on at the minute. I want the podcast to be part of that. And the sort of longer form videos to be part of that. And it's up down to you guys too. I'll throw out the content, and if you like or don't like it, I mean, I'm not going to continue doing it. If it ain't getting the sort of reaction or views or whatever. I mean, if nobody fucking watches these things, I'm not going to do them every week. But. I'm loving these back, the background music. I think it's a, a nice addition to it because, I mean, as I'm doing these first few episodes, I'm going to struggle for for words as they are now. Look, there's a gap in between me talking. So it's good to have that little beat. I think it's pretty cool. So each week will be a different a different a type of vibe. This week it's a very 80s, Stranger Things almost jam going on. Yeah, along with your guys' help too, you know, you can send in topics and stuff for the podcast so we can sit. And I'm concentrating more on the audio side of things, so the video is just sort of a re- recording of me sitting here talking to myself, but. This Tyson Fury energy drink is very good. The original, I highly recommend the original. Available in Iceland stores. Here in the UK, Iceland. And it's strange. He teamed up with Iceland to make a fucking energy drink. Strictly sold in Iceland, from what I can, from what I can see. But I mean, it's it's tasty. It's decent. 
I mean, energy drinks, everybody tells you, oh, that's not good for you. All right, you know, everything, nothing's really good for you. You know, you got to take these things in moderation. To the people that drink fucking two or three a day, God love you. When I, I used to work in a, a factory where you, we used to work 12 hour shifts, and a few times I took two or three just to get through the night. That was a good few years ago. I would not recommend that to anybody. Trying to do more than, one, more than one in a single day is far too many. But yeah, this is nice. It just keep, it sort of got us. We went to the Iceland one day and I was like, what? Tyson Fury has an energy drink? Uh, so yeah. The King has entered the ring with the hardest hitting energy drink is one of the taglines on the website. But that fucking line. It's a feeling you can't bottle. So I put it in a can. Oh, only Tyson can get away with that. Very cool. But yeah, guys. I mean, check the video out. You'll get my full, real, sort of, views on it. For a first go of a, uh, an energy drink, I have to say it's very good. But Tyson Fury, the big dosser. Well done. The man's a legend. So yeah, the podcast, the Buck Easy podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts. And, like, I obviously have to pay to get this put up, and there's a website where I put it up through, and you can check the, where you get your views and stuff from, and, <laughs> where our listeners listen to it. The main location for people listening to the little the little podcast that once that wa- once was is America of all places the United States top countries United States and then United Kingdom Northern Ireland 50% of all like okay this this is based on the, the 10 episodes or the 11 episodes that were out a year ago Nearly all are Amer- listened to me by Americans. Well, there you go. We've, over, we've got quite a reach. Um, yeah, it's strange. Strange even thinking that somebody in America sitting listening down to me talk bullshit. But very good. If there's anybody in America listening to this now, please uh, hit us up on our socials. Instagram, Facebook. Comment on a YouTube video. Tell us where you, you heard us first. Where you discovered us. Yeah, it's strange. It really is strange. It's cool that you can sit and watch and sit and try, sit and look at the analytics and see where Echo Podcasts, whatever the hell that is. Is that Amazon? Is our main place? Echo Podcasts and then Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Echo Pod. I never heard of that. Must be Amazon. But yeah. So that's the thing. It's all about the getting it out there for people to listen to, even if it, is, if it is bullshit for a little half hour or an hour. So yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, so. That's one thing I want people to start doing is uh, interacting with the, the podcast, be it through emailing and a couple reacts at gmail.com or on any of our socials. Hit us up with comments, questions, topics. There's one video that I 
gonna, probably going to do first. I talked there about uh, doing the videos of the restaurants and coffee shops and stuff, the way that the, the town is starting to bloom and good, all good things are happening and stuff. But there's one thing that has annoyed the hell out of me for a long time about this town. And it probably happens in every town, in every country, in every estate. We're talking we're talking this town alone. It's probably happening in every estate. And that is dog poop. Now what what do I mean by dog poop? So I have three dogs. We'll maybe introduce them. If you're watching the video, you can actually just see where I went over here. One of my dogs in the background. So dog poop. I have three dogs and being a responsible dog owner, you buy poop bags, you pick your dog poop up, you put it in the bin, you put it in the dog poop bin. You uh, clean up after yourself when you're walking your dog. So where I live in this city is close to a, a sort of major tourist attraction, which is the, the city walls. We are one of the few remaining places in Europe that have a, an intact city walls. So it's a tourist haven. There's tourists all around us at all times. But there's also dog walkers all the time. On the walls, around the walls. They're just called the walls. They're Derry's walls. You live here, they're just called the walls. So there's dog walkers constantly. Like we live, the estate I live in, not necessarily going to name it. But people will know what I'm talking about. I, you know, I know some people go, "Oh, your your estate's a shithole anyway." It's you know, that's not what this conversation's about. This is about trying to be a responsible dog owner. Our estate is just not. Or it's directly beside the walls, so people come through our estate. There's a nice bit of grass. You can walk around, let your dog walk. Blah blah blah. 99% of the dog walkers do not pick up after their dog. Now, during lockdown, so we're, what are we, almost a year and a half, two years into lockdown, or into COVID, during the first lockdown, obviously the whole world didn't know what the hell was going on. We didn't know whether to leave the house or not. But then once we kind of got our bearings, okay, we can go out, go out for that walk, one walk a day. Tons of people were walking their dogs. And tons of people started to come through this estate with their dogs because there's the bit of grass, let the dog go, blah, blah, blah. So tons of strangers, be them from wherever the hell they're from, it doesn't matter where they're from. Uh, coming through and letting their dog shit all over the grassy area. Now the one thing that annoys me about this is that grassy area is six foot away from a primary school and well that should not, shouldn't happen for starters, letting your dog shit all over the outside of a primary school. That annoys me. The people that are just blatantly letting it happen, when like when I'm walking my dog or dogs and they just stand there and even say hello to you as their dog shits and then they walk on and oh, it makes my blood boil. It ain't hard to pick up after your dog, but this one stretch of grass, which is hugging the walls, right on the walls, it's maybe two, three hundred feet of grass, big wave, windy path going up through it. People go through it all the time, kids go through it all the time, dog walkers go through it all the time. During the first lockdown, we walked our dog. I mean, we started to notice that there was a lot more poop than normal. We counted them at the time, and I only wish I recorded it at the time. I'm going to do it, do a real angry video of it. There had to be 60, and I'm not even joking, 60 piles of poop on this one big stretch of grass. This was only this one stretch of grass. <laughs> And I mean, 
it has a knock-on effect on a number of things. You can't walk your own dog through it because you're walking over other... You're trailing your dog through poop. Could have an, a, a bad effect on your dog then because it's other dog's poops. Kids in the estate can't play. I mean, when I was younger, kids played on grass, trees, outdoorsy. Although, although kids these days don't really go outside. But it fucking annoys me. It grinds my gears that people can't just pick up after their dog. I mean, this town has a number of shops that are called, like, discount stores, pound shops, where you can buy poop bags for fucking very cheap. We even bought nappy bags, because you get fucking 300 of them for a pound, and use nappy bags at one stage. People are, are like, and there's signs up, and there's bins, there's signs up, they say, if you're caught letting your dog poop, your dog foul, you're gonna get fined 500 quid. I I dare somebody from the council in this town to tell me how many people have been fined in the last five years for letting their dog foul, poop, shit, wherever. I guarantee you it's a big fat zero because it happens week in, week out. Now this is only this one stretch of grass that I we counted like 50 or 60 poops. Now, this small estate that I live in, there's quite a few people that have dogs, and I know there's quite a few people that, that don't pick up. You know, I'm not going to start that row with them. Each to their own. You know, there's only so many times you can have a row with somebody. But, you know, people coming in from other areas of the, the town. Now, this is just this one stretch of grass, I said that. So, if I then go on the walls, and walk around the walls. It's about a half hour walk, 20 minute walk. That is covered in poop. I mean, this is a major tourist attraction. You know, when COVID calms down and people can travel again, this town is normally covered in tourists. The walls are always busy, always tons of dog walkers. And again, this is a knock on effect from COVID. People are trying to get out for that hour that they were allowed or half hour that they were allowed. They're walking their dogs around the walls it's a good nice walk you know for your dog I do it all the time but they let it drop and away it goes and like I walked my dog the other day around the walls and I was like oh it just you see it and you're like I almost I almost in a way feel like if somebody walks past and sees me with my dog are they going to think it was me that done it and it's a it's a I, I feel like people don't even talk about it enough that's only two small areas of the town. And then along the river in this town, there's a big long walk that you can take. A lot of people walk it, run it, cycle it. It goes along the river on this side. It's the same on the other side. I'm, I'm guessing it probably has the same issues. Right on out, you can go like three, four miles out, through, three, four miles back. And it is covered in it. Now, I have a brother who lives in England. One year, he came back visiting went for a run out out the line as they call it and that was the only thing I could talk about the amount of dog shit that was the whole way out the line now that's not necessarily a tourist touristy part of the town that's, but that's where a lot of locals would would walk and walk their dogs and stuff it's a fucking joke but the icing on the cake for me recently <laughs> now as I said I work in a, a food place in town I was in, on, it was a Sunday morning, we were on break, it looks out on the main road, our window, and this dog came past, it was on a lead, I didn't see the owner, it was a big long lead, and there's a tree right outside our, our business, and the dog shit at the tree, and the guy stopped, and I thought, oh happy days, this guy's going to pick it up, but what he did was he stood and he waited for a few minutes, made sure nobody was looking, and then he just flicked it out onto the main road and walked on. <laughs> I was like banging the fucking window, shouting at him, pick that fucking up with you. And he just walked on. Didn't give a, not a care in the world. And that's the second time I've seen someone do that. And now there's a, there's a shopping centre in this town. It's called the Richmond Centre. And we were, 
me, myself and Jillian were walking past it to go into the Christmas Centre and there's somebody on the other side of the road walking his wee dog. Buzzy day, tons of people. The wee dog pooped. It was outside the bank, I think. Somewhere along there. He, j- he used his walking stick. They flick it out onto the road and walked on. And even people were looking at him going, what the fuck? What is going on? I mean, it's... Like, and then... On that same road during lockdown, um, I mean that during the first lockdown, obviously the place people weren't going anywhere, and this is like a main shopping sort of street where tons of foot traffic all the time. During the first lockdown, when there was hardly anybody there, but people were obviously walking their dogs through it, and some people had just let the dogs shit all over the main street, and the, like, oh, it fucking annoys me. Somebody went through it on their bike and trailed it down the fucking street. This is all like in the front of all these major shops and the poor cafe on the corner had to come out and throw water over it and try and clean it and all this stuff. And it's like, people don't take the the responsibility of owning a dog. They don't take it serious. They really don't. Like Like when I first got my dogs, my dogs are now in their, almost in their teens. I was that guy. But once I got my second, no, sorry, my third dog, she was a fucking horse. She's lying there. She's a big dog. I can't be that guy that lets the dog shit in the street. So I'm constantly buying poop bags. Constantly buying the nappy bags at the time for the two wee ones. So we have two Jack Russells. Constantly, constantly, constantly. It was like, we got this bag that we really liked using and we couldn't get them anywhere. So I had to try and get them on the internet and bought a fucking 15 or 20 of them. Ordered in off the internet. People just want to... I mean... Oh. <laughs> it annoys me so fucking much. It annoys me so much. I am going to do a video. I might do a, like a series of videos. Hopefully they, they get seen by the right people. Of all these different places in the town. That people just don't give a fuck. And just let it happen. And... The main bit of grass outside our house is going to be number one, and then the walls will be number two, and then we'll do different places. I mean, this town has dozens of running clubs, cycling clubs, walking groups. We have three bridges that that are of tons of foot traffic. I guarantee you, nobody gives a shit, and it's covered in poop. I'm I guarantee you, running clubs, cycling clubs. I've given off, but nothing has happened. So I'm going to start a series of videos. <laughs> I don't even. Uh, I was thinking the other day, what would, what would I call them? The Poop Chronicles or something like that. Poop Scoop, Poop Scoop episode one. It's a it's a joke, and I mean, if anybody, when I do release it, if anybody from the council sees it, prove me wrong that people have have been fined. Prove me wrong. And like where I am, I'm not necessarily naming it, where I live, there are people that let their dog poop. And I know, and I've spoken to people and confronted people, irresponsible dog owners who let their dog off their leash that aren't trained. Quite a few of those. And then the lockdown allowed people, well, not allowed people, but made people sort of go that wee bit extra trying to discover new places that they could walk. So we have regulars now that come through who are responsible. People from other estates, neighbouring estates. Lovely, lovely people pick up, that do pick up. But then you get those scumbags that don't. And I mean, when I was younger, we were outside all the time, playing on the grass, running around. I would hate to let my son go anywhere near grass, anywhere near this estate, because of the amount of poop and then we always laugh because then the council will come up and cut the grass and then all the poop disappears because it's been boom exploded by the fucking guys cutting the grass every single time we, we me and the missus laugh every time oh look it's the, the grass is almost clean now because they cut it and that's it and then another fresh load of stuff comes up so <laughs> I'm going to stop talking shit now. Uh, that'll be... I think the first... 
one of the first sort of long form long form videos that I'm going to try and do. It'll be a series of videos. I'll try and think of some funny name, the Poop Chronicles or something. What? Yeah, it's a joke, and it re that guy that only happened recently. That guy outside my work. You know, it's at a fucking restaurant of all places on a Sunday morning. Not a care in the world. Just well, he cared because he cared if anybody seen him do it because he was like looking left, looking right. Nobody there. Boom! Kicked it out onto the fucking road for somebody to drive over. Oh. Yeah, it annoyed the hell out of me. So yeah. I think the title for this, literally the title for this episode, you be talking shit. So yeah, I'll, on our on our next episode, I'll let you know how I get on. We're recording the first episode of the Poop Chronicles. Poop skip. Yeah, and like this is this side of the town. This town is divided by a river. We have the city side and the water side. I guarantee you every estate has the same issue. And you know, look. The council are all buzz about their poop bins and the, you know, putting signs up and all the rest of it. Not one person gives a shit. And I, when the video does come out, Mr. Councilman, tell me how many people in the last five years have been fined for getting caught letting their dog poop. Let me know the numbers. So I think we'll end this podcast there on a very angry note. A very shit note, a very angry note. We'll end it there. Um, so keep your keep your eyes on the YouTube channel for the, that series of videos. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you're watching it on YouTube, give us a like, subscribe, comment. Keep downloading wherever you get your podcasts from. And I will see y'all next week. Or hear y'all next week. See y'all next whatever. Stay frosty. I'll see you then, guys. Thanks for listening. Thank mm -hmm. you.